welcome to this video on how to prepare to go through NRA instructor training successfully and with flying colors and have fun at the same time. There's a certain pressure to the way the BIT, the BIT, basic instructor training and the specific discipline training that will accompany your BIT if you have not yet had one within the last two years as the policies stand as of this date in April 2017. And that pressure is made a whole lot more fun if you realize in advance what you're going into and how it will be. Additionally, certain key preparations will make you come through a whole lot more happy with how it went and to give you some very good advisements, some special keys that you are going to be very thankful for. My name is Guy Masterson. I'm an NRA training counselor. We put on the BIT on the specific discipline of BOPS, B-O-P-S, Basics of Pistol Shooting, on the ILT, Instructor-Led Training module, twice per year in the spring and in the autumn. We do a BIT, B-R-I, Basic Rifle for Instructor, in the midsummer range and an IDW instructor development workshop for refuse to be a victim. I am a regional counselor of that program also. Let's introduce you to a few things. This is the W. When you say the word weapon in the instructor training, when you take it with us, you wear the W. Next person that says it, they get the W, it gets passed along through the training as an aid to help you cut back on the use of that word. How does the W work? There's a loop, it cinches up, and then you get to come back on your loop, pick your length, I like it kind of short, I do every now and then get hit with the W, and you can wear it a little bit longer for the women, you can wear it like a purse, that's wearing the W. Why is the word weapon not used in NRA trainings? Because of the pesky connotation that the word has in media use, it conjures up images of people being injured, and we want people to use the words firearm, gun, revolver, pistol, rifle, not weapon. Now that's easier said than done for people with military background or martial arts background wherein that is the word of choice and it's a very honorable word with very deep roots and so people who are teaching martial arts or have active military or have been in the military or law enforcement in in certain divisions and areas of law enforcement then it's going to be very deeply ingrained and you still do want to weed it out of your nra civilian training classes. Wearing the W, at, think you're, you're, at first you're going to think it's fun, but once you've worn it a couple times, you realize it's a little bit hot, has a little bit of a burning feeling, and you sure are happy when the next person says the W word and you get to hand it off. Let's talk a bit about safe gun handling. In rifle, it's quite a bit easier. In refuse to be a victim, there are no firearms. And in pistol is where you face the largest challenges. We use a student verification of unloaded. Every time you pick up a pistol that you're gonna to use to demonstrate to students, you're gonna have a student check that the firearm is unloaded. Now in the different action types, it's a little bit different and often students need to be taught how to provide a good verification that the gun is safe. We have people say safe gun once they've confirmed for that action type that there's no ammunition present. In a semi-automatic like this one, a Browning High Power, you're going to look down the magazine well and then you need to see through the port into the chamber at the start of the barrel and then they're going to say safe gun so everybody else can hear that it's been verified. Now in handling a pistol, we want you to think about 
the front part of the barrel is the muzzle and imagine that you have a perpendicular line going across the muzzle. Ideally, you're not going to turn and point that gun closer to a student than that 90 degree line. That means all your students would be on this side of the gun. Now that's ideal and there are ways that you can manage the gun safely without that being fully accomplished, but that's a good barometer. You should always know if you're past that perpendicular line. One thing that you need to be careful about is not sweeping, and that term means passing the muzzle along in front of anyone at any time and any of your body parts, including your feet, legs, and your hands. Very common to see an instructor candidate make that mistake of pointing the gun at their hand while they're pointing to parts of the gun or handling the gun generally. A safety violation in an NRA certification is a pretty big deal. You really want to do some practice before you're in class where you feel the pressure and you have a lot of people looking at you and get really careful and aware about your safe gun handling. And remember, this applies also to training guns, often used in force-on-force -force blue guns, red guns, and similar. They should be handled as though a regular firearm and all, the, all of the firearm safety rules should be applied. We're going to set this down, magazine out, action open, port side up, that is cleared and benched. That way everyone can see that it's safe. Always leave them like that in the instructing hall, pick it up, student verification. A little practice with that will go a long way in your certification. Let's talk about public speaking. We had recently a student that came to one of our certifications and she had been a Toastmasters instructor. She pointed out that there's a, a saying that the first fear in human life even worse than death, which is the second. Death is the second fear that people have, and the first is public speaking. And guess what you're going to be doing? Public speaking. But not only that, you're going to have just a few minutes to prepare what you're going to be talking about. You're going to have to take some notes down, and it's nice to have a little system that you like. A little notepad like that's perfect. Make, your, make yourself some hot uptake, easy to quickly see what you're talking about. And... That way it makes you that much more confident that in a short period of time you can prepare a small presentation. Part of the challenge is that you're going to be working with co-candidates that are instructing together as a team. And that means you're working with someone that you have yet to establish harmony with or synergy or rhythm or timing. And it's somewhat challenging to manage the handoffs and to manage the coordination of information while you get the students involved, and that's huge in the NRA system, using questions and finding ways through the training aids that you present for use to get your students into hands-on and participatory discussion, asking questions and sharing their experience. This is all very important. We'll come back to that in a minute. Let's talk about, I'm like you know, public speaking. If you want to make your certification a whole lot easier, you start now. Dedicate a ding pot. You say, um, that's how it works. Hey, Bob, how you doing? Um, catch yourself as you're working. Do it at work. Have a little ding pot at work. One at home. Talking to your wife. Hey, honey, at work today. Um, it's the sound of the coins. It's costing you money. Going in the ding pot. It starts to uproot these habits of speech. Um, like, you know, they don't make you look more competent as an instructor. NRA wants instructors that know what they're doing and present a professional image. There's enough negative connotations out there. NRA needs people to help fight that back in the other direction so people know about their God-given rights and they know 
about supporting the Second Amendment, and they can represent these philosophies and understandings in a knowledgeable, competent way, and all those crutch words don't help. You know what I mean? You get used to that sound. It reads it out. Like, but, you know, dude, you can decide if you want to add other ones to it. That's all part of the fun. By the time you come to the training, you want to be pretty competent at keeping out those crutch words. Now, here's a little tip, word to the wise. Let's say you're presenting in class and you do say, um, do you want to say, oh, there I go. I, I'm using the word, um, do you want to catch yourself? You don't want to do that. Even worse, you don't want to catch yourself catching yourself. You don't want to say, um, oh, there I go saying, um, oh, there I go catching myself saying, um. we just want to take the hit, take the ding, move on, act like it didn't happen and prevent the next one. Don't make a train wreck out of a little slip. The two things that people struggle with the most, I want you to have an opportunity to think this through before your class. Whether you're coming to us, Pure Land Security, the NRA Division of Elephant Mountain Firearm Training, or you're going to another group, another training counselor somewhere in the United States, I want you to think about this. These are the two areas where people have the hardest time. One is in the evaluation of other instructors. You are expected to be able to look at presentations by team teaching groups and come up with positives, what went well in that presentation and what would have made it even better, a growth point, what would have made it even better. For example, it would have been even better if they didn't say, I'm like, you know, 30 times. Now, you don't want to be negative and you don't even want to be oriented by criticism, even a constructive type of criticism. You want to throw it like a spiral out ahead of the instructors and put it in a way where it is. It would have been even better if the crutch words were minimized so that the speech was that much more professional. Boom. That's a good growth point. That's a great way to put that. It would have been even better if your body language was more open to the students and not hands in the pocket, arms crossed, facing into the corner, whatever it might be. That's, that's an, a great way to phrase a growth point, and that works really well to help people improve their instructing. And that's the heart of the matter. It's important that instructors are able in groups while teaching together to have the courage and also the technique to be able to give each other ways to improve but not to speak in ways that offend you don't want to harpoon that's part of the secret you don't want to go you really blew it when you started talking about guns and then you hit this topic that's a harpoon you don't want to direct on here's what you did wrong it would have been even better if you had found a way to navigate that topic and gotten onto the content like you should have it be for the students that's that's the way spiral throw it a little bit ahead of the instructors that's a good way to give comments for improvement now finding positives can be hard too and a lot of students struggle with that you should always be able to find something we can always improve and we can always find positives to notice and to give some positive reinforcement a positive is hey their eye contact was really good. Their voice projection was really good. There's lots of nuances to this. Their presentation of the material, the content, the way they delivered it, the handoffs between the instructors was really good. There's always things that you can find. The other hard part that people struggle with is getting people involved. The participation factor really should be as high as you can make it. So instructor candidates that come into the programs and they're ready to use training aids to cause their students, which are the other instructor candidates in that class, to be comfortable contributing, asking questions, looking up things in the reference manuals, using the posters on the wall, using other training aids that are provided to cause that involvement. And here's where people struggle. A lot of people feel that they should be NRA instructors because they know a lot and they feel like they should stand up front and people should exude their knowledge. They should, they should digest the knowledge that they exude. People are coming to digest what they know, but NRA sees it very different in the civilian certifications. Remember, there's a firewall that the National Rifle Association of America maintains and that the civilian certifications, different from law enforcement and military, 
are geared towards people who are not on duty. They cannot be given orders in this, in this sense of military or law enforcement. They can in safety situations, but that's a different matter. Now, the heart of the matter is that some people philosophically tend to be a little surprised by the NRA's requirement that the students be engaged and permitted to participate and that their questions be deemed important and responded to in connected and interested ways by the instructor. So it's very important to reverse your thinking. Even though you may know a lot more than the students, they learn by doing and they learn by hands-on experience and being able to be in a comfortable environment where they feel like you're responsive to their concerns. For them to feel that way, you have to open that door and remember, you don't teach just from what you know, but you stay on their pace and you put your knowledge in their service. That's the key. You've got to speak on a pace of their hearing and understand what they are, are receiving from your way of presenting. And that can be hard, but everyone can do it. And this preparation, this advance notice of facing those situations can make a very big difference and keep this that much more fun.